it doesn't record things like your webcams or your messages. Um, it just records my screen, probably my um, um, my webcam. I don't normally put my webcam on for these sessions, but uh, uh, we're doing web meetings for the team every morning at nine, and it's it's proving really uh, good to be able to actually see people. Um, so I have put the recording on, but anything that you uh, say will will not be included in that. It really is sort of a, a primarily a screen recording, so we can share it with people who couldn't attend. So today's session, we're just going to look at how you can use some of your data to get messages out to clients. And I'm going to show you this on the latest Ethernet build, or the, the latest one that's actually released. Uh, we've, we've got two more in production, as I said. The same principles apply uh, regardless of which version of eClinic you're using. So if you're still on um, eClinic Pro um, or one of our um, specialist um, things like the, the, our hospital management and um, trials management stuff, all of the same concepts apply. Some of the mechanics may be slightly different and some of the older versions don't have uh, the same levels of integration because that's the really big deal with the new platform is the, the integration levels, uh, the data API, the sort of outbound and inbound. But just as a, for, for people who are on this version, um, if you want to use, rather than text messaging, if you want to use the built-in connector uh, for MailChimp, um, then we can help you that with that. It, it is actually quite straightforward. You just go to your settings, you copy some data from MailChimp into here, um, some API keys and stuff, and uh, it just works. The one thing I will say is that a slight caveat is that not all MailChimp sorry, not all MailChimp accounts uh, do work with those integrations simply because the, the free and very low cost accounts have some limitations on them. Uh, the, the limitation on the free account is that you can only have one audience um, and it uses the integration uses the concept of a MailChimp audience to um, send the data there. So um, what we'll do then is we'll look at some of the mechanisms for getting that data and how you can um, send the data either using text or using um, various other channels. And we'll also look at how you can export the data so that if you are not using MailChimp and you want to use something like HubSpot or Constant Contact, all things that we're likely to integrate with over the next year or two, uh, but currently we don't integrate directly with them, there are ways of getting the data to those other applications in a pretty straightforward um, way. So, depending, as I said, on which version of eClinic you're on, you will see a Find button on your main menu. And the find button either is here on eClinic 2, or if you are using the older versions of eClinic, the colored icons in the middle, uh, there's a large one that says find patient, and then there are four small ones that we sometimes refer to as find zone. Um, I think it was Joe that christened it the find zone. It, it was, uh, wasn't meant to be serious, um, but it's kind of stuck. Um, and all of those allow you to search different aspects of the data. So a lot of people are trying to do this through the reports engine. Actually, the reports isn't the best place to do it because there isn't a direct link, for example, between reports and the text messaging section of eClinic. Um, you would have to do some fiddly stuff with exporting and importing. So the find section of eClinic is really where you want to be. Um, and the most, uh, I should be conscious about doing things like scratching my head, shouldn't I, with a webcam? Um, um, at least I'm dressed. Uh, so um, the find section, as I say, is really the heart of it. Uh, and the, the, the key, the, I suppose the most important one that people will often want to use is find patient. But actually the other things are just as useful. So we had a, a request in um, Zendesk this morning, our, our support ticket system, saying I'm really having trouble finding all the patients who'd had a particular type of product. Um, uh, because I want to send an email or a text message to all of those patients. Well, actually, that's quite a straightforward thing to do. Uh, but that person, um, like I think most people, was kind of going through the reports and trying to export, when in fact there's a much simpler, um, more integrated way of doing that. 
So I'm going to show you a few of those things, and then I'm going to show you how you can build those into campaigns, or you can just get the data straight out of eClinic uh, to to do what you want. You know, if you if you want to put it into um, uh, other applications other than Mailchimp, that's that's fine. So we'll start with um, a simple find uh, and find patient. Find patient takes us through to a representation of the patient record in which we enter our criteria. Now, there's a, a few things that you need to understand about searching generally. Uh, and if you've not used this bit of eClinic, um, I'll, I'll just give you a few hints and tips. So the first thing is that when you go into this, you, you do what's called, you create a find request. Uh, and a find request means um, a set of criteria. It could be a very simple, single criterion, um, or it could be, uh, a whole range of things. So for instance, if I just wanted to find all the men on my database, simply select male, click find, and off it goes and finds all of my men. And so there we go, 1,371. So it can be really, really simple. Um, but it can also be much more sophisticated. And you can combine um, criteria together in, in what's called a an and search, or you can combine multiple requests in what's called an or search and i'll explain those terms so to start with what i'm going to do is i'm going to do an and search what i'm going to do is i'm going to search for my men so i'm just going to put mail there i'm just going to draw a few things on the screen just so that you i'm sure you can see what i'm doing so i've just ticked on where it says mail there and then i'm just going to put a value in the age as well so i'm looking for men within a particular age range now one of the most useful things that you'll find whenever you're executing any of these searches is this bit here that we call the key. And somehow I've managed to overwrite the word key just to make it much harder for you all. Uh, sorry. Uh, but the bit that's under the pink there says key. And you'll see this on all of the search screens. And it says, um, and it may be sort of not super clear, but uh, if you have a look at this on your own system, you'll, you'll get a good idea. Um, I do have a Oh, yeah, uh, uh, another telling me I can hear. Thanks. Um, so, um, you can see here that we, it's actually a star, an asterisk, that's shift and ace. Uh, that says find any value type. Find no value type, an equal sign. So, for example, if I want to find um, absolutely every single person who has a mobile phone number, don't care what that mobile phone number is. I just want all the records that have got a value in there. I can just simply put a star or an asterisk, uh, if we're going to be technical, into the mobile phone field there, and that will allow us to find any value. The, the one that I wanted in particular when I was talking about age was this one here, three dots. And you can see it's there illustrated with a couple of dates. Uh, I'm actually going to do it with a couple of numbers. I want to find all my men who are from 50 dot, 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 to 60, inclusive. That means it will find men who are 50, 51, 52, and so on, in, up to and including 60 years of, of age. So I'm looking for three things here. So a slightly more sophisticated search than my original looking for men. I'm looking for men between 50 and 60, inclusive, who have a mobile phone. And if I just now click find, that will fairly quickly. Uh, do that search. Now, obviously, longer searches, sorry, I haven't even clicked find. Let's click find and then it will work. Um, longer searches will, um, or more complex searches will take a bit longer to execute. That's still took under about, um, I think, probably about a tenth of a second. Um, uh, but we, we only have around nine or 10,000 patients in our test system. So, um, uh, obviously, on systems, you know, with sort of a couple of million or so, uh, it, it may take a second or two to execute those. But what we can see here, let me just uh, get rid of my scroll. So we can see here uh, that we've done a search for, for members in that category, and this time it's returned 189. Last time it returned, was it 1,300, 1,400, something like that? So uh, it, it's a much narrower search this time. And coming back to, um, coming back to the, the fine patient, what we can also do is we can do what is called an OR search uh, or a multiple request search. So if I want to expand that in different ways, um, I can use 
this button here, or this button here, and I'll explain the difference shortly, to expand my request to look for a bit more sophistication. So let's say I want to look for men in a particular demographic. I want to look for men um, who are exactly 60 years of age. I'm, I'm doing this deliberately to keep it um, small or relatively small. Um, and again, I'm going to look for star with a mobile phone. And this time I'm going to duplicate the request um, or I could have used add request, either or will do. Um, the advantage of duplicate is it just keeps my criteria here. So I might want to look at something um, similar. It just might, if, I've, if I've got eight or 10 things filled out there, it might save me a bit of time. In this particular instance, it isn't going to save me a bit of time uh, or not a significant amount of time. But what I've done there is I've duplicated that request and I'm changing my second one to female and 50. So I'm now looking for men who are exactly 60 and have a mobile phone. And at the same time, I'm also looking for um, women who are 50 with a mobile phone. So we've got two requests there. And uh, the first request combines three criteria, men. So I'm looking for people who are men and 60 and have a mobile phone number. Or I'm looking for women who are 50 and have a mobile phone number. So two combined requests. And when I click find now, I'll just get rid of my beautiful artwork. Um, you can see now I've got 82 patients. Uh, and if we go down there, as we'll see, we see that um, Amrit Airy is 60, uh, Kirpal um, Arongi is 50, Sally Ali is 50, Tracy Barton is 50. Let's see if we can find the man. Adam Bronte is 60. So you can see there, um, uh, but it's returned exactly as what we asked for. And here, it's also showing that we've, they've all got mobile phones. Now, so we've, we've done our patient search. Um, and now, that was the question is, what can we do with that data? Um, again, you will have these facilities, whichever version of eClinic you're using, it may look slightly different. The mechanics may look different. But you will have two options on the patient list. One of those is export and one of those is uh, campaigns. Now, it is slightly different if you were using a, a, an older version of eClinic like Pro in that campaigns is actually split into multiple buttons. So instead of saying campaigns with the pop down here, uh, it will say um, text, email, MailChimp or whatever uh, across the top there. And you may find that because MailChimp did change their API, they upgraded their API, but um, eClinic Pro integrations are a lot less reliable because of those changes. Um, so you may, in fact, you find it easy to use the export. Um, but certainly with eClinic 2, the, the integration is absolutely rock solid with uh, eClinic 2 because uh, it follows all the new MailChimp rules post changes. Um, you may know that they changed lists to audiences and did a whole lot of work in the background. So, um, if I want to run a campaign within eClinic, um, um, okay, oh, so I've got a question there on the search. Can I not click male and female tabs at the same time uh, and do the duplicate search? Um, yes, you could, or in fact, if I was looking for everyone, ordinarily I wouldn't have even bothered to click those tabs if I wanted male and female. The reason I had to click them in that instance is because I was applying different criteria to the females. Uh, I was looking for men who were 60 and women who were 50. So I had to specify one search as men and 60 and one search as female and 60. Uh, sorry, female and 50. Um, so, so that's why I did it in, in separate ones there. Hopefully that clears that up. Uh, if I'd just been looking for people of 60, I wouldn't have bothered choosing the, the gender. Um, OK, so um, the two things then that we can do are we can execute campaigns. That means that using eClinic's um, inbuilt facilities to communicate with those patients in some way. And those ways are internal email, I'll talk about that in a second, text messaging, telesales, not relevant to most of you, but eClinic will do sort of auto dial call center management. Um, and if that is something that you're interested in, you know, connecting either to real phone systems using um, technology called Tappy or to virtual systems. So things like Ring Central, um, Skype, 
on Mac, you can even directly FaceTime uh, straight from uh, the software. Uh, there's a way of setting that integration up. Tasks, just creating a task that goes onto your task list or MailChimp. Um, we're going to use text uh, simply because it's it's the most straightforward and it's actually right now it's the thing that we're getting most requests for. I would say we're probably getting oh, often double figures a day of requests for, from clients wanting to send out group texts. Uh, we have our first two today before nine o'clock. So, um, OK, so if we go on to text, and I'm just the thing you've got to do here is just give the name, give this campaign, as we call it, a name. So let's say this is our um, uh, March 30 COVID. I bet you're all sick of seeing COVID-19, aren't you? Um, uh, campaign. Um, that's all I'm going to uh, text. Let's just say that it's text as opposed to anything else. Uh, and when I click yes, it's just going to do a bit of work. Now, at this point, this is always a good time to go get a cup of tea. Uh, and I'm only doing 81 patients here, so it's going to scan these fairly quickly. But if you're doing this on a largish group, and by largish group, you know, we're talking hundreds, thousands, potentially tens of thousands. Um, you know, we do have clients who routinely send 70, 80,000 text messages in a go. Um, then it will take some time. Uh, it's, it's not that eClinic slow. eClinic is actually pretty fast compared to most applications but it's doing a lot of work. Uh, first of all, it's looking through every single one of those patient records individually to ensure that they've opted into messages, because this is another crucial point. If your patients are not opted in, they will get removed from this um, list. Uh, and so the conversations I'm having with a few people around that point are, is if you want us to temporarily opt people back in, um, if you feel it's legitimate for your patient base, that the, the law around this stuff is actually quite nuanced. And I think that there is an argument that sending people text in these circumstances under, under the legitimate interest rule, uh, but I will say here clearly, I am not a lawyer, so don't take this as gospel, whatever you do. Um, but I do think that there's a case for it. And certainly, you know, that's advice that I've been given. Um, and in fact, the UK government has done that itself. We've all received, or many of us have received texts from the government for which which we haven't opted into um and the government is subject to exactly the same laws as all the rest of us uh, in that respect and um, there are times sometimes when you've just got to send people information um uh, and if you're not sort of heavily marketing i mean if you're sending out a message that says we're still open for business yeah yeah you come and get um your physio then i think that you need to respect your opt-ins um if on the other hand um you are sending something about all your clinics being closed, then I think there's, um, you know, it's a different situation. So if you need some help with non-opted out, sorry, non-opted in um, patients, do let us know, we can help you with that. So I'm just gonna compose my text. It's gonna say, hello, I um, uh, hope you're all staying well and safe. Stay safe, it's a new greeting, isn't it? It's uh, interesting how language evolves um, in situations. So, um, and at this point, I would click send, and it would send all 81 texts. And the process for all of those other things is pretty much identical. If I'd been running a Mailchimp campaign, it would have been exactly the same. Quite a bit slower, which is one of the reasons I haven't done it, um, and because it also then has to load all the data up to Mailchimp, um, and it will give the, an ID here. I'll show you what happens with the Mailchimp campaign, though. Uh, let me just come to marketing. See, there's a couple of questions, and I will come to those questions very, very shortly. Um, just come into marketing, 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 MailChimp. If it was a MailChimp campaign that I'd sent, you would see something along this um, line. You can see that all of these ticks and all of the IDs there show that that has been uploaded to MailChimp because MailChimp is sending back its identifier to eClinic. So I'm just going to take questions for a second. Um, oh, it says hello. Yeah, uh, what about the tag name? Okay, yeah, the tag name normally comes directly from your uh, settings here. So it's a really good question, actually, because tags are a bit of a dark art. So um, in your text settings, text, text, text here, you define your uh, default SMS tag. And 
the uh, just a, a quick word of um, on, on a technical level, what the the tag is. The tag is the thing that appears on your text message. Uh, so at the top, if you get a text message from a known contact, it would normally have their name, and that's actually interpreted through the phone number itself and through your contacts. If you receive a commercial um, text, say from O2 or Vodafone, it would normally say O2 or Vodafone at the top, and that is the tag. Sometimes you might see a phone number. The phone number can also be a tag. Now, you just need to know that a tag, an SMS tag, needs to be, and there's a new rule, I think it needs to be at least three characters. Um, but if you're using what's called alpha numeric data, um, an alpha numeric tag means um, letters and numbers. It needs to be no more than 11 characters. So if your clinic is called um, the Shipley Clinic, you can't have the Shipley Clinic as a tag. Uh, you'd have to find a workaround. So clinic... Um, is six, Shipley um, is seven, 13 with a space, 14, you can't have Shipley space clinic. So you might have Shipley space clin or um, Shipley clin, you know, all as one word, you know, whatever kind of works for you. Uh, you do have to sometimes be a little bit imaginative where you've got a longer name, but the SMS tag is the thing that goes on top. Now, I say it's restricted to 11 characters. You can actually put a phone number in there so the exception to that is if you put a telephone number like plus four four, um, whatever phone number seven five four five and so on. Um, so, uh, so that that's kind of uh, that's tagging uh, your text, uh, and that's quite straightforward as well. So, what I'm going to do um, just to expand on what I've said. I mean, I, I think for most most of you, that's probably a good starting point. You can go into find find patients. And then when you've got a found set, let me just get a found set, um, women who are 23 today. When you've got a found set, you can uh, execute those campaigns. Campaign email, text, telesales, tasks, and MailChimp. Um, I was just gonna dive onto something else, but then it's just suddenly occurred to me, I really need to cover export before we do that. So um, exporting, uh, is a protected part of the system. Not everyone will necessarily be allowed to do that. Um, and that is governed in the user settings. So if I just come very quickly to user settings, one of the privileges is export data there with a tick. If that is not ticked on your user account, um, then you have been intentionally blocked from doing that. Um, so uh, if you find that you can't export, please, um, before you sort of ask us, um, just ask whoever manages your user settings in-house whether or not you're allowed to do that uh, because we're not allowed to override user settings. That would be a breach of GDPR. So um, we can't go in and change your user settings uh, for you um, or certainly not without the explicit consent of whoever's in charge. So one of your directors, for example, or a known clinic manager. Um, okay, so so what I'm going to do, I'm just, I'm just going to show you how um, uh, how we can just export the data if you do have permission to do that. So I'm just going to come back to my 50 year old women. I'm going to choose export and uh, go to my desktop and I'll call this um, women 50 because I'm in imaginative mode today. There are a number of different formats for exporting data. Um, and the most useful, I would say, would be Excel and comma separated values. Comma separated values is often referred to as CSV. So if you ever hear anyone talking about a CSV, that means comma separated values. And that's just a standard text format that allows different data applications to share data. So you can use CSV to export from eClinic and import into one of our competitor applications if you, if you, if you ever um, decided to make that move or vice versa. People coming to eClinic, we can um, extract in CSV or Excel or some other format and get them into eClinic. I think that Excel is probably for most purposes the best, um, but you probably will want to just have a, a quick look. I mean, for instance, I'm not familiar with um, Active Campaign. Um, I'm not familiar with HubSpot. I'm not familiar with Constant Contact, really. I've had a, a look at these things, but I don't really know them in any way intimately. If you are 
wanting to import into any of those applications, just take a quick look at what the options are. It will always tell you. You'll always find it somewhere uh, how you can get data into those applications. So um, I'm going to do Women 50 here, and I'm going to save it to Excel because I know that Excel will work in most scenarios. And I'm just going to tick this little box that says Automatically Open File. And I'm going to click Save. Um, by default, it will call the Excel worksheet Sheet 1 because that's what Excel will call it. I sometimes like to give it a name, like data, and click Continue. Now, this is where people sometimes trip up. Uh, we had um, a Zendesk request this morning saying that um, they weren't allowed to export their email address. They've worked out how to find things, they've worked out how to export things, but they couldn't work out how to get, well, they, they, they thought that the email address was blocked to them. So this is something we'd like better control of, but you know, we, we use a, an application called FileMaker to build eClinic. We can only do what the core data system database allows us to do would be the same with like SQL Server and PHP or any of those kind of other applications that we might choose to work with. And um, the default situation for exporting is that you have the visibility there is just what's on front, in front of you on the list. But that doesn't mean to say that anything is blocked off from you um, or your facility. And the, the key bit here is this stuff. The bit where it says current layout. So what that's telling us is that we're looking only at the data being displayed on the current layout. And if I click in this, we get a pop-up menu and we get a lot of stuff. Um, and for the purposes of today, I'm not going to get into any of these other things. Perhaps when we get to reporting and exporting some reports, I'll delve into that. All that really matters for today and for most of your exports, um, but certainly for marketing purposes, is this choice here that says current table. So current label is restricting it to what we're seeing on the screen on our list. Current table is restricting it to the contents of the patient table. A table is um, like the, uh, eClinic is what's called a, a relational database system, uh, and that's made up of the database. So eClinic is the whole database. That consists of a bunch of tables. Tables are things like patients, invoices, appointments, um, each of the kind of discrete types of data that we store. And within each table, you have a field, and the field is kind of the data level. So we have a field called name first, and um, I don't think you have to be particularly technical to work out that that is the patient's first name. So when we choose current table here from this pop-up, that gives us access to the whole of the patient record, and we can export any single piece of data that we want from the patient record. So I'm just going to choose a few samples. I'm going to scroll down. We like to keep things together, so that's why we, we have slightly odd um, naming conventions. We don't call our first name field first name. We call it name first because we like name, all the name stuff to be grouped together. I'm going to export kind of a full patient record. You probably wouldn't do this many for like MailChimp, but I'm going to do name title first um, or HubSpot or any of those things last. I'm actually going to choose the address field, address one. Address two, address town, county doesn't exist anymore, so don't bother with that. Um, I'm going to have the bit of data that I might use for tagging. Some systems have tagging systems. So let's say the appointment date first, the appointment date last. And we'll come back to those fields um, in a bit because they're really useful. Um, and I'm going to put the email. So there's email. So all I'm doing here, by the way, is I'm just selecting an item from here and double clicking it. The other option is I could select it and when you select it, you've got an option to move. So if I select um, let's go to our phone fields, if I wanted mobile phone, I could click there where it says phone mobile and click. So this is what click here and then click where it says move. Um, but actually it's just as quick to double, or it's quicker to double click. So phone mo mobile, oops, missed phone home and you can see on the right are all the things that I've selected now if I get one of them wrong if I think actually you know what I don't really want the appointment date it's no use whatsoever to me in the context of what I'm doing uh, so I can just double click here and that takes them out or again click and clear and that would take them out 
So I, I've got a bunch of records there. So what I also want is the patient identifier, ID patient. And I actually want that to go at the beginning. So I'm just going to click on this little double arrow. Just show you where I'm doing that. This little double arrow here. And I'm just going to drag, click and drag that to the top so that my Excel sheet is in the order I want it. Let's just get rid of my artwork again. And now when I export, I'm going to build an Excel spreadsheet with all of these records. So it's only 63 records. But you can see here that very quickly I've got ID patient, name title, name first, name last, address one, two, town, postcode, email, phone mobile, phone home. And I can now go to any online system. It really doesn't matter what it is. I think almost every piece of software on the planet now, um, certainly every piece of worthwhile software on the planet, will be capable of importing either an Excel document or a CSV document. So I could go to an application that isn't integrated directly with eClinic, like HubSpot, like um, Constant Contact. Uh, I say this having never tried to do these things, but I, I would be amazed if there is a marketing application out there that doesn't allow you to go in and import this data in this format. Um, as for the mechanics of that, obviously you'll need to go to those applications. They'll probably have videos or guidance somewhere, uh, but it is generally pretty easy. Um, and in fact, let me just see if I could just show you that in MailChimp. I may not be able to find it very quickly, and I don't want to. Um, uh, I don't want to kind of labour this point because it's not really the the idea. Uh, but it, I think that I can go and manage audience. Yeah, import contacts. So I've got an option here for importing contacts. Uh, CSV or tab delimited file, so CSV or text file, uh, copy or paste, copy and paste from Excel or XLS. So that, that looks quite interesting. So in MailChimp, I could just simply email address, first name, last name. You, see, you can see it's got to be in a particular order. Uh, so I'd probably have to go back and export my sheet in a slightly different order. What I would actually do um, is I would have done it in CSV because I don't do this ever. I'd forgotten that this was the structure for um, MailChimp because we, you know, we we normally do it with direct integrations. Um, but if I wanted to do this, I'd go back and do it as a CSV. Uh, and then there's normally a mechanism that allows you to match up the fields. So you'll find whatever software you use, um, Active Campaign, um, Constant Contact, all of those others, there will be a mechanism for getting the data in. So um, I said I'd try to keep this short to sort of 30 minutes. We're already at 40, but there's one more thing that I really, really want to show you all, and that is how you can use the other areas of data to do this, because this, I think, is something that even quite a lot of experienced um, eClinic users, um, this has passed them by. Um, and, you know, certainly the emails that we've been getting recently uh, would indicate that. And like I say, I did see one this morning for, from one of our clients that, you know, that are good users of eClinic. So, you know, I've been there and I'm seeing that they're, um, they're, they're using the features um, really well, uh, including some of the integrations. So um, if I just go to find records, so I'm going to look at, I'm going to look at invoice to start with. So find invoice lets us search for um, invoices. And the, I'll, I'll slightly change the, because I don't, I don't want to sort of identify anyone. The, um, the request this morning was about a particular product line. I want to find everyone who's bought this product, and that may or may not have been within a time frame. I can't remember. So let's have a look at that. Well, we've down here on our invoice search, we've got invoice items, and we can actually just put a string of text in there. So one of the things that we often use on our demos and training is a JIRA products, e A G E R A. So if I wanted to find every single invoice for all eternity, of every single uh, of every patient who's ever bought an Agera product, then just simply typing the word Agera there would give me that data. Uh, and if I want to narrow that down, let's say I only want to look at people who bought Agera in 2020. Uh, I can simply put 2020 in there. Um, key, by the way, sometimes we hide it for space. Oh, uh, ah, ah, yes, that's interesting that it's restricting my data entry there. Um, it's insisting on four digit dates. That will teach me not to be lazy. The key sometimes we hide. So let's say I'm actually going to put a greater than symbol. So greater than 31, 12, 2019. So the greater than symbol, you know, go back to your, your school math. If, uh, if that's not something that you can remember, um, you'll see it. 
that's going to look for everybody with an invoice after, oh, sorry, 2018 is what I meant to do, um, greater than the 31st of December 2018. So that's everybody who's bought a JERA in 2019 or 2020 in simple terms. And again, we can add requests. Let's say I want to find some anyone who's also bought, um, I don't know what else we've got in there in terms of products. Um, but, oh, random, let's say Botox. There's, there's going to be a zillion of those. Botox, uh, and again, greater than 31st, 12th, 2019. What, uh, 2018. What you can't do, unfortunately, is you can't put multiple strings in um, there. So I'm going to find that. Now, this is quite a complex search because it's searching two tables at once. So I was going to tell you that that was going to take a minute. It's taken about four seconds. Um, so it's actually brought that down. You can see it's, uh, it's narrowed that down um, to 623 invoices. Um, what I was going to say about speed is, again, you know, good time to just go get a cup of tea. You know, one of the worst things about being not being in the office um, is that when I'm doing these webinars, usually someone will pop in halfway through with a cup of tea. And um, there's only me and uh, our daughter, Holly, in the house. So, um, um, yeah, maybe she could go make me a cup of tea. <laughs> so um, what we've got there is we've got 623 um uh, invoices. Now we don't want to send a text message or a Mailchimp um, email to every invoice, as it were, because quite a lot of people will have more than one invoice. And if we just, you know, sort of take a, a look right at the very top, we can see there are three invoices there to Ebony Lowe, two there for Sandy Wood, three there for Annie Harris. Um, but what we've got is we've got a button here that says Patience, and what the Patience button does is that takes us back to where we were before the patient list uh, and it will narrow down to just the individual patients. So again, if you're dealing with a lot of data, it's quite a complex thing that it's doing, um, sort of filtering out related data. But so if you are doing this on, you know, if you've got like 50,000 invoices in your, in your search, it, it's not going to be instant. Do, do, be, do be patient. But clicking on patients now, We'll go and do a bit of work, and you see it's just giving me a bit of feedback to tell me it's doing that. And this will bring us back to where we were when we did the patient search. Uh, and this same principle applies for all of the other bits of the data. So if I did an appointment find, let's say I wanted to find everybody who's had an appointment in the last six months, or wanted to find everybody who had a, a course that had some outstanding treatments, you know, that normally you'd say to them, You've got to have these within a 12-month period. Obviously, if you shut for the next three months, that's not happening. Uh, you might want to communicate with those patients saying, we will extend the um, deadline on your course, or whatever, deadline's the wrong word, probably, um, to you know, a further three months. So there's, there's lots of stuff that you can do with the data itself. So what we've got here is we've got 345 patients. So we had 600, and, I believe it was 629 invoices. It was a long time ago now. Um, it's narrowed that down to our 345 patients. And now I'm going to build a campaign with my 345 patients. So this might take a little while, um, but I want to do it, and I want to do it for a specific reason. Um, so I'm going to build a campaign. Again, I'm going to choose text. And let's all try and remember 345. So um, this was um, Botox. Actually, you know what? Before I do, I'm, I'm actually going to narrow it down uh, because I don't want you all staring at a screen um, for like two minutes because two minutes isn't a very long time when you're really working, but it's an awful long time to stare at a screen. So I'm going to choose a Jera. Um, oh, what an idiot. Sorry, I've made it even worse, haven't I? Um, by not putting the date in. Um, so I'm going to choose a Jera. I'm just going to really narrow down the date. So greater than 31, 12, 2019. So just for the current year. Um, and that's only 49 invoices, which in turn is only 40 patients. That's better. Uh, but you, you see the principle over large amounts of data. And you can see how different actually it re responds to different data size sets. I'm going to do a text campaign. So Jera. 2020 text. You know, I just might want to, because, you know, we all want to get through this. We all want to survive. And one of the things I'm seeing quite a lot of our clients in aesthetics doing 
but not exclusively aesthetics, is where they have a product line. He's really trying to push product line sales. Um, so that, that narrowed it down a bit, but the what, what's also done at this point is it's taken our opt-outs. It had, I think it was 40 patients originally, um, but it's only put 31 into the campaign. So you can see here that it's restricted opt-outs. It's also, it might be that some people didn't have a mobile phone in there, so it will have stripped those out. Um, and it's created our campaign. So these are the people I want to communicate with. I want to send them a MailChimp or I want to send them a text saying, you know, Ajera. Uh, we know you love a Jera. Um, we're, we're, uh, we have some stock to shift. Probably wouldn't phrase it quite like that. Sorry, I've never been gifted with marketing messages or sales messages. Uh, not my thing at all. But um, uh, you can see how quickly you can communicate with people to, to really quite narrow criteria. Uh, and that's a really, really powerful thing. So, um, I don't want to detain you for, for much longer. Um, uh, we'll wrap up the session fairly soon after giving you a bit of time for questions. Do feel free to ask questions now or at any point in time, um, drop me an email. Um, uh, I'm a little bit slow to respond to email at the minute because the volumes are really high. Um, but hopefully what you've got out of this session is the power of find, uh, the power of searching in eClinic and how that can then feed into all of the types of ways that you might want to communicate, whether that's within eClinic, so using our integration technology, so find patient, female 20, find, using our integration technology for MailChimp, our built-in text platform. Um, I did say I'd talk about this email button, uh, and I will very, very shortly or if you want to use the export feature. Bearing in mind that it's not just patients, it's also appointments, it's also invoices, it's also courses or treatment records if you're in eClinic Old World. All of that is searchable, all of that can be exported, all of that can be um, uploaded to different campaign net mechanisms. Now really, really briefly, eClinic can send group emails from within eClinic itself. We urge you not to do that. We keep trying to move it from various upgrades and we get grief from people who want to use it. And um, the reason that we advise you not to use it is very, very simple. Systems like MailChimp, HubSpot, Constant Contact um, have their own platforms from which they send emails. They have really smart technology for tracking, seeing who's opened, who's clicked through, all of that stuff. They have really smart tracking, smart technology around compliance, and they have really smart technology at getting past junk filters. We don't. Secondly, if you are sending large volumes of emails from your own domain, let's say you, you know, you're um, uh, mark at theshipleyclinic.com and I send 4,000 emails that are identical in the space of 10 minutes, my ISP is gonna see that. It's gonna send an alert. Um, and someone is going to look at that and say, oh, we've got a spammer on our hands here, because that's not what personal emails or even business email accounts are designed to do. Your ISP, I mean, you probably get away with this one, you know, 63. But if you do it in high volume from your own email account, your spammers, you're going to be spotted as a spammer and your ISP will come down hard on you because they're liable, um, you know, under GDPR uh, as data, uh, data processors they've got to make sure that you're not abusing uh, your data. Now, you can go to them and say, no, it's all legitimate. I've got all these permissions, and they'll turn you back on, and you'll go around in circles. But we have seen it, genuinely, we have seen it happen. So uh, if you're sending four or five, 50 or 60, you might be okay. Four or five, you will be okay. Use email, by all means. But you'll, you'll get better results, more visibility of, of engagement with your data. In MailChimp, it is really, really cool. You can see things like who's read their emails, who's if you put a link in, who's clicked on that link, and what the time from, you know, email accounts that are no longer valid, all of that will come back to you. So for the sake of a relatively small investment, and, and I've got nothing to gain from this, you know, it's not like I don't have uh, shares in MailChimp uh, to the best of my knowledge. Um, so um, there's no vested interest here. These um, products exist 
um, in a very specialised arena because they are really, really good. And, and we would encourage you to use them. We, you know, we use them ourselves. We're a heavy user of, uh, of MailChimp. Um, uh, we use another product called PipeDrive uh, across the group to, to do some sort of management of automation. And, you know, we, we, we strongly recommend uh, that you use those rather than trying to send loads of emails from eClinic. Okay, so I'm going to shut up. Um, the webinar should be available to watch again. Um, because uh, yes, I did put it on record. Um, do feel free to ask more questions. Um, if I don't get questions for the next minute, then uh, I'll bounce. So um, if you want to text all, can you do a, an open search? Yes. Um, so if you wanted to text all, then the very simple thing to do is find records. What I'd recommend actually is rather than all, is just put a star in mobile phone. If you just put a star in mobile phone, that at least eliminates trying to send texts to people that don't have a mobile phone. Um, coming back to something I said earlier, um, um, if people have opted out, then you probably just need to quickly contact our support team and say, can we temporarily opt everybody back in? What we could do is we can take a snapshot of your opt-ins. We could export the data as is and just keep that. We have a secure place where we keep um, um, client data for any archive reference that we need uh, and we can keep that and then what we can do is when all of this is over we can restore your opt-outs back to where as your opt-ins and opt-outs back to where they were um, but if you do it right now anybody who's not opted in even with a mobile phone will get excluded so just make sure that you communicate um, that to support if um, if you need uh, hopefully that answers your question you're welcome. Okay, so um, very quickly then, before I um, disconnect, tomorrow we're going to look at um, integrating websites into eClinic. And uh, as many of you know, uh, and I men mentioned this earlier, that I sold the company to the ClearCourse Partnership. We're a group now, I think 19 software companies all sorts of exciting stuff that we're going to be integrating with. But um, we do have on our um, roster, uh, one of our sister companies is a company called NetExtra. Uh, and a couple of people from NetExtra will be joining me tomorrow to show you how, um, I mean, it's, it's kind of more of a proof of concept than a beautiful website. They've developed it in 24 hours because uh, we only kind of decided back in the last week to do this. Um, uh, they're going to join us as well just to show you how you can sort of do simple web integrations using the new Dexter API. And um, some of it will be a bit geeky, but um, I think it's worth watching anyway. Uh, and you may want to pass some information on to your own web teams um, if, uh, if that's relevant. Uh, but I do think it's worth you uh, uh, joining if you've got a bit of time. Um, do let us know. If, the, if you've got things that you would like me to cover in these sessions, uh, apart from taking maybe a few days off over Easter, I'm going to try to keep these going for as long as there's an audience. Um, and, I, you know, it's um, it's my job to, to give you what you want. We want to stay engaged. We want to try to keep spirits up. And anything that you want help with, um, within reason, <laughs> I have all run, happily run a, a session on, on these um, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday webinars. So uh, I'm not seeing any new questions. Um, thank you so much for your time, everybody. Uh, I hope you're all staying safe to use the the new lexicon. And um, you know we, we're all here for you right now. We're we're all available. The whole team's still in. Uh, we're very very busy with home installs. So if you are asking for home installs, do be patient. Um, we can only do uh, what we can do. Um, and some of us have been working like 40 nowadays to try to get this stuff done. But, uh, you know, it is getting a bit more sensible now, I have to say, this week. Pleasure, everybody. Um, if you're not on the eClinic2 platform, I mean, I don't want to kind of sound like I'm using this as an opportunity to do the hard sell or anything. Now is, is a good time to think about it because, you know, all upgrades are disruptive. Um, and Faye, it's a pleasure. It's you know the least that we can do for you um, is to to invest some time in you. 
Oh, hello, Christine. Not speaking, spoken to you for a while. Hope you're well. Ah, uh, yes, Greg. I mean, I know you from a past life because, of course, you used to be with um, one of our other clients. But um, um, yeah, looking forward to working with you again. And um, yeah, in fact, you'd have been going live this week, um, 30th. Is that uh, yesterday? You would have actually been going live yesterday had all of this not got in the way. But thanks, Greg. And uh, yeah, we're, yes, <laughs> yeah, we, uh, yeah, I think we've got about five installs on hold, but that's. Uh, you know, there are bigger problems out there right now than uh, than that to worry about. Okay, people, I'm going to wrap up the session. Thanks for your time, and I will catch you all again. Oh. Well, one last question. Is there a basic reading info you can send? Um, the best thing to do, actually, I'll um, I'll get this on my screen. Uh, for anyone who wants to do more eClinic learning, uh, we do have a, uh, a YouTube channel. Um, it's mainly geared now towards version two, but you can get the legacy videos for version one. If you just go to the eClinic website, um, clinic.co.uk, and if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you will see a link saying training tutorials and training tutorials takes you to a bunch of YouTube videos. You can also sort of Google eClinic YouTube or eClinic to YouTube um, and all of these tutorials, I'm actually been meaning to add to these for ages and I'm hoping to get a bit of uh, downtime, um, quiet time. It's not happened yet, but you never know. I'm sure in the next three months it will. Um, but there's a bunch of videos here on kind of all the basics. So, yeah. Uh, and anything that isn't clear, just come back to us. And uh, by the way, if you want a, a system to play on, uh, anyone, the, the system that I showed you is the one that we use for our own demos. It's all sort of sample data. Um, anyone can have access to that. If you want to try some of this stuff out, we just have one rule, and that is that you don't put anything. Um, which is either personal data, please don't put your own names in because it's seen by thousands of people uh, and don't put anything that might be deemed to be defamatory, you know, sort of, you know, avoid things like politicians' names. We'll send you a link to a, a random name generator for, for practice purposes, but you can always ask the support team for access to our test and training system. Everyone's welcome to that. Okay, so I will call a, call it a day and quit the session. Thanks, everybody.